One more characteristic of electromagnetic plane waves that's kind of interesting is radiation pressure. And radiation pressure occurs because an EM wave, electromagnetic wave, carries momentum. And that might seem a little uh, incorrect, right? So how, how can a wave carry momentum? Particles carry momentum. Well, this is that whole photon problem again. Light is really particle, it's really photon, and of course a particle carries momentum. But since we're doing classical optics, we think of light as a wave. So we'll calculate this pressure and this momentum that it can impart in terms of wave properties. And there is a way that you can think about it that'll make you feel better, because I, I want you to feel good about your classical physics that you're learning, even though it's all incorrect. So if we have our plane wave here with E going up and B going this way, and let's imagine it's going to hit an absorbing surface. All right, it's going to hit an absorber. I'm telling you it's going to create a pressure. It's going to push on that object. And one way to think about that that might not work for you is imagine, I mean, what is this? This is a mass. It's made out of uh, atoms. Atoms have positively charged things in them and negatively charged things in them, and neutral things, but most of it's charged. So let's imagine you're a positively charged particle that is a part of this mass. So obviously you're a proton. As this plane wave comes by, right when it hits, imagine E is up here, and therefore B would be like that. So E is pointing up, and B is pointing out. What force is that going to create on the particle? Well, if the particle's not moving, the B field will create no force, right? Because the force due to the B field is QV cross B. So you have to have velocity to have a B force. So maybe none from the B field, but the E field will make it move, right? So F is QE for the electric field. So it's going to feel an electric force up. F is QE. Therefore, it's going to accelerate a little bit. It has mass. Maybe it's bound, but it's going to move. It's going to be some response. And you might get a little bit of a velocity due to the E field. Well, now, if you have a little bit of a velocity, V cross B is like this. So there is an FB. So the magnetic force would be in because the electric force gives it a little bit of a velocity up. Maybe it's so small it's meaningless. But I'm just giving you the idea that there could be a force here. What if you come at a different point in the phase cycle and the E field is now down? Does it reverse? No, because the B field also reversed. So now the E field will push the particle down, a little bit of velocity down, V is down, cross B is in, force is still that way. So you can see this way to create a little magnetic force is forward in both cases for a particle. Now, the, new, the protons don't move much, and they're heavy. Let's think about the electrons. They're actually where they actually might move. Right? They're actually free to, to do something because they weigh so much less, and they're not bound up in the nucleus. So a negative particle, same thing. Now you're worried maybe it's going to be the wrong way. Well, um, E is up and B is out, right? So what is this going to do? It's going to make a force actually down because F is QE and the charge is now negative. So you're going to have your FE is going to be down. And now you've lost track of how many negatives there are. You don't know what's going to happen. So you're going to get a little bit of a velocity down, VE. And now that you have some velocity, you can respond to the magnetic force. So V cross B is this way. The magnetic force is that way. Oh, except it's an electron, so it's negative. So it does actually feel a magnetic force that way. So if the E field makes it move, the B field pushes it forward. And we could flip the whole thing just like we did before. You could have E come down, B go in. The force E will be up. It'll push it a little bit this way you'll get your FB that way. So you can see for electrons and protons in this material, all that the light can do is push them. It's just going to push them. And you might say, well, maybe it'll move it into some circular motion. Well, it's doing it at 10 to the 15 hertz. Right? There's not a lot of time for it to establish an orbit. It's basically just going to shake them up and down a little bit and constantly push them forward. So that's a little bit of a made up thing to explain what is really happening, which is that the light is a particle with momentum. But it does give you the idea that this plane wave can push on something. 
okay? If it can push and if it can apply a force when it is absorbed, that force will change the state of motion of the object. It'll accelerate the object. And if you change the state of motion, you changed its momentum. Well, if the light came in and changed this thing's momentum, momentum has to be conserved. So the light wave had to have had momentum. So that's how you can imagine the light wave having momentum. So how much pressure? So the average pressure, it's a sort of a detailed field theory calculation. So I'm just going to give you the average or the result. It's actually very simple. It's the irradiance over the speed of light. That's all it is. So pressure is the force you're creating per unit area, just like irradiance is the uh, power, the watts per unit area. So those are both normalized per unit area. You just divide it by the speed of light. If you want the force, it's just the power divided by the speed of light. Right? So it's, it's that simple. It gets a little more complicated, not a little more complicated, it gets slightly different when you have a reflecting surface. So if you have your plane wave coming in like this, and for some reason I'm drawing it differently, and a reflecting surface will send it back, right? So you get twice the momentum change. So because we understand this as momentum, the momentum change is now twice as big because we didn't just have momentum and then have it go to zero of the light. We had momentum and then it went the other way. So twice, so everything is twice. So P average, the average pressure is two times the irradiance over the speed of light. And if you get into angles, all the intermediate things happen with momentum and all that. But these are the two cases we actually uh, care about and it's fun to write homework problems about. Um, and now I want to know, is this real? Can we really see this? So I have a way to show you uh, radiation pressure. So I've got a couple things here. First, I have extremely light paper. So this is um, lens cleaning paper from my lab. We use it to delicately clean little microscope objectives, and it's very light. It's like mostly air. Right? There's a little bit of mass to it. So this is very light, and this is my green laser pointer, which I have sort of uh, juiced up a little bit. So, I mean, it's still legal, but it's a fairly powerful green laser pointer. So I'm gonna shine it on the back of this, and a lot of the light will scatter back because it's white. So we'll get sort of a 2P or a double minimum kick, and we'll see if anything happens, see if we can make it move a little bit. Okay, so it doesn't make a big motion, so you gotta look really close. That's why we have the, the close camera. And now this thing bounces around with the air conditioning, and, and I think the air conditioning's calm enough. Here we go. See that? Fell over. Let me try again. If I can get it down on it quick enough, it might actually slide. Amazing. Radiation pressure. How many believe me? Of course it's not radiation pressure. Way too small. I was blowing on it. Okay, all the demos are real. This is the one that I'm, I'm making fun of you. I blew it. It's a magic trick. Um, let's calculate if I should be able to see this radiation pressure. So let's see, the force, um, like I said, isn't the irradiance over the speed of light, it's the power over the speed of light. So power of my laser pointer is say 10 milliwatts. So that would be uh, 10 to the minus two watts. And the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight, right? So that is about 3.3 uh, .3 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, newtons. So that's a pretty small force. Not impossible to measure, but pretty small. Let's put it in everyday uh, ideas. That's the weight of about three times 10 to the minus 12 kilograms. So it's the equivalent to the weight of that many kilograms. That's about the weight of a biological cell, right? So a mosquito is milligram. You gotta go down a factor of a million below a mosquito, get down to a single cell in the mosquito, and that's about how much force, the weight of that is about how much force I applied to the white paper, okay? That doesn't mean it's radiation pressure is not measurable. We can make a lot more power in a laser than 10 milliwatts. And we can actually measure forces about this small in the lab with specialized instruments. But in terms of 
everyday objects, you can't feel radiation pressure. It's too small.